John, 33 years ago, Pete Rosell and the commissioner, Rune Arledge, then the head of ABC Sports, got together amidst much skepticism, had this crazy idea called Monday Night Football. I think it worked out. I tell you, it's something that has been super, and it just seems to get more exciting all the time. And I know that, you know, one of the first questions that I was asked when I started on Monday night, ABC by friends, they would say, are you going to wear that yellow blazer? And I said, heck no, they haven't worn those things in years. And here we are. Now it's official, but next week they're back in the closet. Tonight's game is a beauty. The last time we saw the Denver Broncos on the last night of September, they had a meltdown. They lost to Baltimore, but a month later, a lot of people think they're the best team in the AFC. Yeah, and a lot of that is Mike Shanahan. I remember after that Baltimore game, I said, what happened in that game will never happen again because Mike Shanahan won't let it happen. And you just watch him in the last couple of games, Ryan Greasy looks so comfortable. I mean, he does everything. I mean, he's he's back there. He's handed off. He's running the club. He's audibleizing. You know, he's, he's throwing. And, and he looks like the Brian Greasy of two years ago. And watching him practice the other day, I was just thinking, these guys are coming off a bye, and they're awfully, awfully fresh. Meanwhile, the Raiders at the end of September, a lot of people felt they were 4-0. Look great offensively. A lot of people are making them their Super Bowl favorites. Now they've lost four straight since, and a lot of the players are saying tonight's a make-or-break game. Yeah, and and they're in a hole. And you know how they always say about great players, great players have to come up big in big games. I think the great players also have to come up big when they're in a hole. And I think that the Jerry Rices and the Rich Gannons and the Tim Browns and the Charles Woodsons and the, these great players that the Raiders have, if they're going to do it, have to pull them out of this slump starting tonight. A lot of future Hall of Famers on the field, and, and why not? It's a celebration. It started in 1970, and here we are in the 33rd season, the 500th Monday in Denver. Jerry Rice told us last night he had no idea how intense this rivalry was until you joined the Raiders last year. Can you just describe the intensity and what we can expect tonight? Well, tonight is just like a playoff game, so we're going to have to come out and try to take the crowd out of the game. And, uh, you know, I challenged my players earlier during the week, so we're going to come balls out and try to take this home. Uh, you know, we just got to play hard, we got to execute, and uh, we got to put some points on the board. Tonight is your 40th Monday night game, more than any other player. <laughs> you have provided some very memorable moments in those games. What is it about uh, the bright lights that brings I out the best? I love Monday night football. You know, it does something to me. It really gets the juices to flow, and so, you know, uh, I got my A game tonight. I'm going to come out, I'm going to try to do everything possible to help my team to win. Jerry, have a great night. Thank you. All right, Al, well, Jerry can add to his enormous legacy tonight. He needs just one touchdown to make it 200 for his career. 200 for Jerry Rice. Already a memorable moment in that interview. <laughs> a very memorable moment. <laughs> Bill Callahan, who took over when John Gruden left for Tampa Bay, won his first four. Now he's lost four straight, and Mike Shanahan was the Raiders coach at the age of 36 back in 1988 and then was fired four games into the 89 season. Mike Gnor just signed by Denver. They let Tom Ruin go, the punter. Jason Elam's kickoffs weren't going far enough. Elam, of course, remains the place kicker. And Mike Gnor, former Cowboy, to put it in the air at mile high. And it bounces out of bounds. So they just sign him because they need a good kickoff guy. And his first kick is out of bounds. The Raiders and their offense taking over at the 40. Kickoff out of bounds. Replace at the 40 yard line. Automatic first half. Rich Gannon, Delaware. Charlie Garner the third, the untouchable University of Tennessee. John Ritchie, Stanford. Jerry Rice, Mississippi Valley State University. Tim Brown, Notre Dame. Roland Williams, Syracuse University. Barry Sims, Utah. Frank Milton, University of Arizona. Barrett Robbins. Texas Christian University. Mo Collins, Florida Gators. Lincoln Kennedy, you go. And the Raiders open with three wideouts. On first down, down into the air immediately, and Rice makes the catch. And Jerry Rice has now caught a ball in 250 consecutive games. And when you do the math on that, that's more than 15 complete seasons. You know, it's interesting, Jerry Rice was just telling Melissa that you know, we have to come out and get off to a good start and take the crowd out of it. And they got a big break on that kickoff going out of bounds because they start on the 40-yard line. And then, of course, the first pass completed to Jerry Rice. Gain of six. Fake to Garner. 
Gannon's going to run, something he hasn't been doing a lot of this season, and gets close to a first down. Let's take a look at the Denver defense, and they've been good. Trevor Price, Clemson. Lionel Dalton, Eastern Michigan. Trustor McLaughlin, Clemson. Kavika Pittman, McNeese State. Ian Gold, Michigan. Al Wilson, Tennessee. John Mobley, Kutztown. Delph O'Neill, Cal Berkeley. Kenoy Kennedy, Arkansas. Isaiah Reese, Alabama, Birmingham. Denard Walker, LSU. That oh, look like they're mad, don't they? <laughs> yeah, well, they've been playing mad under Ray Rhodes, their defensive coordinator. They've been brilliant. Third down, short one. John Ritchie and Zach Crockett in the backfield. And the Raiders have converted each of their third and ones this season, and they do so again here as Crockett takes the ball into Bronco territory. You know, one of the things the, you know, the Raiders have kind of gone back and forth on this, on this losing thing. They would go where they want to pass, and they'd pass a lot, and then they figured they're, we're passing too much. We want to get into our, our running game and establish our run. And, and now I think they're back where they just want to balance. It's probably where they should have been all the time. Gannon going to the air again on first down to the outside throws and hits Doug Jolly the tight end and Jolly picks up nine just short of the first down they'll spot the ball with the 41 tackle by 25 Denard Walker. You know, one of the big matches today is going to be Lincoln Kennedy against Trevor Price right here here's Lincoln Kennedy Trevor Price is the best pass rusher on this Bronco team he was a tackle he moved in he's a big strong guy he uses a bull rush you see <laughs> Lincoln Kennedy just got up there and just kind of stayed square and took the ride. Second down and one at the 41 on the game's opening drive. And through the middle, Garner gets hit and then gets hit again and taken down for a loss of a couple. So Charlie tried to probe the middle and couldn't and is tackled back at the 42-yard line. It'll be third down and two coming up. He looked like a pinball that hit a flipper. And you're going to see Kavika Pittman. He's going to take the inside there. See it right there. They're, they're slanting. In the fact, the whole Denver Bronco defense is standing to, st stunning to the left. Charlie Garner runs right into it, and he's knocked backwards and ends up going to the right side. And now the Raiders, third and a short three, come up with an empty backfield with four wideouts. Gannon repositioning Brown. And then with the crowd in full throat, he has to take a timeout. So we'll see if they come to the line empty again. Third and three when we come back to Denver. Charlie Garner offset in the backfield. After the timeout, Gannon under pressure, spinning away. And Gannon is able to get across the 40, picking up the first down. Trevor Price put the pressure on, forcing Gannon to run something he's been doing very little of, relatively speaking, this season. And that's and that's what Rich Gannon does so well. I remember we were talking to John Gruden about it, and he said that that's what he misses is, is, is these things that on these third and short that Gannon, if he didn't have something, could make a move like that and run and pick up a first down for you. Now from the 37, a swing pass. Garner had a way for it, and then he's taken down by Denard Walker. So much of Gannon's game was the ability to improvise and run. As you can see, 34 first downs rushing two years ago. That's uh, more than two per game. 17 last year. Now only five thus far this season. We're at the halfway point. And that's such a big part of an offense is because, I mean, we know that when you get a third down and you pick up a first down, it's not only a first down, but then you get a whole new set of downs. Second down and seven. The ball is at the 33-yard line. Tyrone Wheatley is in the backfield. Rich Gannon is, is making an audible here. He said, this is the toughest part of the play in here. The pump fake and then a sidearm swing to Wheatley. And Price is in on the coverage, taking him down at the 30-yard line. So you'll see Price sometimes blitzing, sometimes playing the run, and sometimes dropping into pass coverage, as he did there. And you know what they did on that play? They only rushed two guys, and, and Ray Rhodes, the defensive coordinator, has done this against the Raiders before. You see, you start up, and you, and you have like eight up on the line of scrimmage, but you just rush two, which means, of course, that you're covering with nine. 
And then that's about the only thing that you have there is that short dump. They gave him that look last year when they beat them. And they really haven't shown it since until right there. Here's Garner now behind Richie. And Garner gets taken down at the 29-yard line by the middle linebacker Al Wilson. And Al Wilson was saying the other day, he said, the big thing we have to do against the Raiders is tackle. He said, Charlie Garner is going to get some plays. Jerry Rice, Tim Brown, they're going to catch some passes. But when they catch those short things and those dump-off passes, we have to tackle them. Al Wilson came to tackle, and that was a big one right there. He and John Mobley getting there at the same time. 47-yard attempt now for Sebastian Janikowski, their number one pick in the 2000 draft. In the thin mile-high air, Janikowski's kick is perfect. So the Raiders have the benefit of the short field after the opening kickoff goes out of bounds. Janikowski cashes in. Oakland three, Denver nothing. Raiders had the ball for the first five minutes, 57 seconds. Scotty Montgomery is back to receive. Sebastian Janikowski sends it to the three. Drop, picked up. And Montgomery with a good run back. Breaking tackles and all the way out to the 37 yard line as we meet the Denver offense. Brian Greasy, University of Michigan. Clem Porters, Miami. Mike Anderson, Utah. Rod Smith, Missouri Southern State College. Ed McCaffrey, Stanford. Shannon Sharp, Savannah State. Ephraim Salam, San Diego State. Steve Herndon, Georgia. Ben Hamilton, Minnesota. This is Ephraim Salam back again, introducing Dan Neal, University of Texas, and Matt Lepsis, Colorado. The Denver offensive line noted for being a closed mouth group. As Greasy on first down has it batted in the air and there's a penalty marker. Bill Romanowski came across the line and unless he was induced most likely is offside. Mike Carey to confirm or deny it. Offside. Defense number 53. Five yards. Still first down. And the crowd goes <laughs> wild. <laughs> we were talking to Romanowski last night and he said he didn't know how this crowd was going to accept him. Of course he came over to the Raiders from Denver where he had played so well for this Bronco team and the first play his very first play against his old teammates he jumps off sides. What was it Ray Lucas told us last week he was anxious before starting from Miami. There's an anxious guy on the very first play comes across the line of scrimmage. Now they give the ball to the good looking rookie Clinton Portis who's taken over as their key back. No gain here. Here's the Raider D. Trace Armstrong Florida. Sam Adams, Texas A&M University. John Perella, Nebraska. Dolores Grant, Oregon State. Eric Barton, Maryland. Napoleon Harris, Northwestern. Bill Romanowski, Boston College. Charles Woodson, Michigan. Derek Gibson, Loyal State. Rod Woodson, Purdue University. Torrey James, LSU. The Raider D after Portis loses one, and now Portis on a second and six, takes it out to the 50-yard line behind a Mike Anderson block. And the Broncos just keep coming up with these backs under Shanahan. Terrell Davis picking the sixth round. Then they go for Orlandis Gary. Then they pick up Mike Anderson. Now this is the kid. And, and he's he's different, you know, and Mike Shanahan said that, that he had to put some speed in this Denver Bronco offense, and, and he got it with Clinton Portis. And, and those other running backs were good downhill runners. Clinton Portis can do it with speed also. And he's become a decent receiver. Greasy is pressured, but he gets the pass off to Rod Smith. And Smith picks up nine before Charles Woodson, who missed several games because of a fractured shoulder, makes the tackle. And the Raiders are really playing that bootleg. You know, they, when, the, when the Broncos bootleg, it's always going to be to their right. In other words, Brian Greasy is going to come out here. So you have to get up the field and contain that bootleg. And that's exactly what they do. You see you fake here. Now watch as Brian Greasy comes around. There's Trace Armstrong right there containing him to make him throw the ball at that time, not letting him get outside. Greasy having a great year. Led the league in pass rating two years ago. Portis takes the toss and then second and short. Picks up a first down and a lot more to the 29-yard line following Matt Lepsis for a 12-yard pickup. Yeah, and you see what Charles Woodson did on that play, the corner. He laid Lepsis. 
he has to, you know, you know, somewhere you have to keep the containment. You have to be the force out there. Watch, watch as Lepsis comes out here and the block. You see Charles Woodson just jumps around that block to the outside. He has to get up the field and force that. Or someone else has to make a tackle there. But when big old Matt Lepsis comes around that corner, if you're if you're a smaller cornerback, that's a, that's an ugly looking sight. Play clock ticking down and Greasy has to take a timeout. So each team had to take a timeout on its first possession. 6 11 to go in the first. Oakland three. Denver nothing. September of 1970 and through the years, it would figure on Monday nights alone, Emmett Smith leads in rushing, Dan Marino in passing yardage, Jerry Rice in receiving yardage. Monday night, Sunday afternoon, it doesn't matter with those guys. Rice most touchdowns, Bruce Smith most sacks. Everson Walls. That's interesting. Most interceptions with 11. Remember when when he was getting all those interceptions? He the left defensive end that played on the same side was too tall. Jones and he caused a lot of it. What a difference that made. Rod Smith makes the catch, takes it to the 23, where he's tackled by Charles Woodson. And we see Rod Smith is is the outside guy, and he's he's playing here and. And, and Charles Woodson is going to cover him man to man. You see Charles Woodson just picks him up right here and gets a jump on him. He was back off and then he had to he had to come up to get the jump on him. What's Bill Romanowski? <laughs> he and Shannon Sharp. He says, I know I have to bump Shannon all there. He's going to catch it. You always have to hit him. Smith was shaken up. He comes out for this play as Clinton Portis takes it around the left side and gets inside the 20 and is out of bounds with a first down at the 18. You know, last night we were talking to Coach Mike Shanahan. He said that his first 15 plays, he said, you don't know what the Raiders are going to do, so he's going to have six plays of two backs, six plays of two tight ends, and then three plays of three wide receivers. Then see how they play those different sets and decide which one he thinks is the best way to attack them. Mike, an assistant under Dan Reeves in the 80s and the Raiders head coach, then came back here, went to San Francisco. And took the head job here in 95. On first and 10, Portis cuts it back inside and turns nothing into a little something. Stripped up by Eric Barton after a gain of a couple. You know what you have to like about Clinton Portis is you just watch him practice and 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 and, and run. He has a lot of life in him. You know he has that thing, whatever it is that that juice it that that he's he's faster than anyone else out in the field. And when you watch him practice and you watch him play. He just kind of shows you that. Well, he has clearly taken over as the number one guy as he's on the bench for the moment. And Olandis Gary, who a couple of years ago was the number one guy, is in the game. Fake toss. Greasy buys time. Soft little lob to Sharp. Inside the 10. Picks up the first down. Will be first down and goal. Harris and Barton. You know, and that, that's that same bootleg that we saw Brian Greasy do earlier. That time he got outside of containment. Now when you get outside of containment, you're going to see him fake here and then come out here and throw. When you get outside of containment, that buys you a little time. You see, when he gets out here now, now he has a little more time than he did on the first one to let Shannon Sharp come underneath and get open. Four Raiders converge for the tackle. First down and goal now at the six. Portis back in the game. It's Portis. And he picks up about half the distance. Three yards, second and goal. And one thing that's interesting, we talk about the, the speed of Clinton Portis, but this offensive line is also very quick. I mean, you just watch them and, 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 and the ball snap and they get off first. I mean, they, they really come off the ball quickly. Shanahan's always loved and Alice Gibbs those those light linemen quick linemen. Yeah the athletic type. I mean they aren't they aren't the big powerful guys but you know we see them all pull I and mean, we saw the tackle Matt Lepsis will pull we see guards pull Dan Neal and they move their offensive linemen all the time. Alex is exorcised because Greasy was forced to call another timeout their second at their second it's second down and goal as Greasy drops straight back throws picked off at the two yard line. Intercepted by Rod Woodson, and Woodson is into Bronco territory. And Rod Woodson can he be chased down by Smith? Not until he scores. Touchdown Raiders. There is an example of a big player making a big time play in a big game. 
You talk about something that'll change a game and a great veteran player, well, that's Rod Woodson. They're on the four yard line. The Broncos are going in. And instead of getting a touchdown, Rod Woodson jumps right in front of Clinton Portis and he takes off. You think Rod Woodson can't run anymore? He's going to take it all the way. <laughs> that was a heck of a play. And that, and that was what, that's what the Raiders needed. I mean, if they were going to win this game, if they're going to be in it, if they're going to get out of the hole, they need plays like that. It's the 12th time he's run an interception back for a touchdown. It's his 65th career pick. It's the second time this year he's picked one and run it back a long distance. He did it in Pittsburgh. This one, 98 yards. And the Raiders go up 10 to nothing. Janikowski's kickoff fielded at the goal line by Scotty Montgomery. And he takes it back to the 20-yard line with 2.52 remaining. And uh, you have to do that after a 98-yard pick at age 37 and at 5,200 feet. And he's, he's been on that ever since. But here's Rod Woodson right here. Now, he's playing a position they call robber. He's just going to come up and sit right here and pick off any crossing patterns and read the quarterback. Now, watch what he does. You see him come up? He's just going to sit right there in the middle, look for crosses. He sees the cross. It was Clinton Portis. He jumps right in front of it. As you say, there goes the 15-year veteran. And you can always tell when he doesn't have real great speed. One, when he, when he throws like this after, after the play. And the other thing is how many times he looks backwards. He's still on the bench, and Anthony Dorsett is in to replace him as Ed McCaffrey makes his first catch of the game, and that's good for a first down up at the 31. You know, we're talking about Monday Night Records. That was not a Monday Night Record, but the Raiders do hold the record, and of course the team record would be Eddie Anderson, 102 yards in 1992, Raiders at Miami. Yeah, and you know that this this altitude thing, I mean, we see Rod Woodson going through, is a real deal. I mean, you come here and 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 I remember when it used to be Mile High Stadium, you know, they always remind you to have a sign the door, 5,280 feet, and, and there really is something to it. Here is Mike Anderson taking it up to the 35. This is what I'm talking about. Look at the visitor's locker room. Now, as you walk by, you see this sign. Elevation, 5,280 feet, one mile above sea level. Now, we really don't need this. I mean, when we come in there and we're getting ready to play a game, we don't need to know that we're 5,280 feet. Well, we can show the, the folks later, but you know, not only have the Broncos had a decided advantage at home, but a couple of other teams in the area. The Rockies and the Nuggets also play far better at home than they have on the road historically. Second and seven. And Greasy takes off, takes it up to the 40-yard line. So it's more than a myth playing at altitude since 1960. The advent of the AFL, as you can see, 64% of the time the Broncos win at home, 40% away. The Nuggets... And they've not been a very good franchise, obviously, through the years historically. But look at that home versus road. And the Rockies, who were born in 93, same difference. Well, you know what it's all about? It's all about red blood cells. When you live up here, you your body makes more red blood cells. So then you get more oxygen. If you don't live here and you come in to play, then you're short on red blood cells and you're playing against heavy red blood cells. I'm going out for a, an IV at halftime. Third and two. And it is Sharp who cannot one-hand it. No. Covered by Romanowski. The ball hit the ground. You don't think that they've covered each other and played against each other and practice and all those things and they know each other well? Bill Romanowski was saying you can't let Shannon Sharp run free. You have to get up. You have to jam him. And that's exactly what he does. He jams him on the line of scrimmage. Then he gets underneath him and runs underneath all the way. So the ball, if it's going to be completed, has to be thrown over Bill Romanowski to get to Shannon Sharp. Now, he does some other things there, too. He kind of grabbed him with the left hand, but he runs. He never did get turned around. But that was a pretty good throw. I mean, you have to get that ball right there. And Sharp is shaken up, and he is still down at the 30-yard line. He still has a ball, and he's still in a split position. And he still has a divot. Watch as he goes down. He's going to take a divot with his helmet. That's a heck of a catch, though. He caught that ball with his left hand. I'll tell you, I uh, I challenge that. I would think they have to challenge yeah, I mean, that. And they have the I time mean, to do it. He has it. 
You see, the knee is down, and he had control. Now, now, he, it was a one-handed catch the whole way, so you, you only have to have control with one hand. Mm -hmm. I think that's a catch. I do, too. The issue during the review is did the receiver maintain control all the way through the process of going to the ground? He received control of the ball, but through the process of going to the ground, the ball came loose. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass. Fourth down. Denver charged with the third and team timeout. Now, that's a different way to look at it, see? I think when his knee hit is when he went to the ground. Now, if you, you know, the knee, the second knee, the roll, and all those things, Mike Carey had a, a different look at it or a different take on it than I have. Yeah, I think that when the ball starts to move, when he appears to exhibit possession, is enough for Mike to feel he didn't control the ball before the knee hit the ground, and thus the call on the field stands. It was, it's, it's a very yeah. tough call. It was a tough one, but I, you know, again, is is a control, and then control when the knee goes down, and that's that's what I think it was. And Romanowski, it was interesting. Uh, Kind of held off taking his oxygen until after they got the ruling. Well, the Raiders have now forced the Broncos into a position where Denver does not have a timeout, and that also means that Denver cannot challenge a play for the rest of the first half. The new punter, Mike Anor, supplanting Tom Ruin, who'd been here for over a decade, and it is fair caught with a flag down, Tim Brown at the 17 yard line. It's against Denver for a hole. And I would think that the Raiders would make them punt that ball again. It's a good I mean, there are sometimes, you know, if you get good field position, you you turn down the penalty. But on this one, I think this is one that the Raiders take and make them kick it again. There is no foul for offensive holding by number 55. All right. First down. All right, let us go to the birthday girl, <laughs> Melissa Stark. Happy birthday. Well, happy birthday to you a day early. <laughs> uh, Eight-time Pro Bowl tight end Shannon Sharp injured on that last play that they just reviewed. He sprained his right elbow. They just took inside into the locker room for x-rays. We'll keep you posted. Al, he is the NFL's all-time leader in receptions and receiving yards by a tight end. So many great years here. And then he went to Baltimore and won a Super Bowl ring. And then Mike Shanahan brought him back. So we'll keep... An eye out for what's happening with Sharp as the Raiders take over back at the 17-yard line. So that decision I was talking about the Raiders, you know, make, uh, uh, taking the penalty, Mike Carey said there was no penalty. So that's why they're at this position. From the 17-yard line, Gannon in the pocket throws, low throw caught by Brown. And Tim Brown, Heisman Trophy winner in 87 at Notre Dame, takes it out to the 36 for a first down. I think that Rich Gannon probably throws crossing patterns, and Tim, Tim Brown and Jerry Rice run crossing patterns as well as anyone in this league. I and mean, it's just a timing thing. As he comes across there, there's going to be a window or there's going to be a point as he goes across the field that he's going to be open. And Rich Gannon can always feel that point or that window. And that will be or was the final play of the first quarter. Changing ends now. Woodson's interception run back. The big play. End of one. Oakland 10. 10 for nothing. And Monday Night Football. Woodson throws over the middle and throws a strike into the chest of Doug Jolly. The tight end across the 50 to the 48 yard line. Gannon is 6 for 6. 57 straight starts. Team record. And 60% completions over his last 10 games, 18 games throwing a touchdown pass, and 20 or more yards with a completion over a 32 game span or two full seasons. You know what's impressive about Rich Gannon and those numbers is he worked very hard to get those numbers. I mean, you talk about a quarterback that prepares, he's at the top of the list. First and 10. Great protection. Swings it to the outside. Brown forced out by Ian Gold after a short game. Yeah, you see what that defense was again? It was that two-man rush, and that's why Rich Gannon had so much time back there. But that was the, the, the good news. The bad news was there's nine defenders. You see, they get these 
two guys block, so there's no pass rush at all. So Gannon can look and look and look and look. But what's the problem? He has nine defensive guys that he has to throw against. Gain of two, second down and eight. To the outside again. This one is caught by Jerry Porter, the number three wide receiver. And Jerry Porter takes it inside the 20-yard line for a first down, four stop by Kanoi Kennedy. You know, it was funny. The Broncos come with, you know, two men, then they go nine, then they decide they have to blitz. So now you're going to see the blitz. Now that puts one-on-one -on -one out here. And now, and now Porter makes that catch, makes Delta O'Neal miss, and then he gets the big play right here. Runs right out of his left sock. Yeah, knocked his sock off, but that was all. Yeah, and, and you know, and again, the Broncos have been playing that softer coverage very successfully. They go for the blitz, and Delta O'Neal's out there with no help at all. First and 10, here's Wheatley. You know, John, I was just thinking about the challenge by the Broncos. I think one of the things the officials look for is control of the ball as you are hitting the ground. And I would have to think in Mike Carey's mind, that he wasn't controlling it as he hit the ground. Yeah, yeah. In my mind, he was. I mean, because I thought that he had the ball here in his arm, and then when his knee hit, that he still had control of it. Then the other knee hit, and then when he rolled around, the ball came out after that. So I thought when the knee hit, then he's down. And, you know, and that's, that's what I thought. That's what he thought. I think it was so close that had the officials ruled it a completion initially, and the Raiders had challenged... They might have ruled it that way. You see, the, I mean, both knees go down before the ball comes out. Meanwhile, the former Raider, Chester McLaughlin. Not ready to take it. That's what happened to Big Chester. Monsanto Pope, rookie out of Virginia, seventh round pick, replaces him. And on second and eight, Gannon coming this way this time, and it is not caught inbounds by Charlie Garner. And that is Gannon's first incomplete pass tonight. You know, and he's getting good pass protection. I mean, that's the thing. He's doing it. You know, some has been the two-man rush. They've, they've picked up the blitz. They've, they've had the effective play pass. And again, the, the guy that they have to block is Trevor Price. I mean, he's a big pass rusher. And you watch Lincoln Kennedy here. You see Trevor Price starts to the inside. He passes him off, and then he takes the outside rusher, and they just keep him right there in the middle. Look at Price on third down and nine. Denver backs off. They rush two, drop nine, and Gannon going to pack it in but not for much he takes it to the 14 yard line John Mobley stops him there now Janikowski will come out to try to make it 13 to nothing that's an interesting thing there's this, this two man rush and have to throw against nine and Rich Gannon's getting a little frustrated with that you can you can see it here that, that they're all bunched up here but only two of them are going to rush now you already have four back so, so they're going to add five to that. You see, now watch that whole thing. This is what he has to throw into or throw against. 32-yard attempt by Janikowski is good. 12.09 to the half. And the Raiders in a game many of them say is make or break. Or making it so far, 13 zip. Well, so far the Raiders have been doing the celebrating on this 500th Monday night. It was interesting at the beginning. Jerry Rice says we want to start off quickly. We want to keep the crowd out of the game, and the Raiders have done exactly that. Bouncing ball fielded by Monte Rieger, lineman at the 20-yard line, brings it back out to the 31. Well, the first Monday night game played at the old Mile High Stadium. Raiders Broncos had to be big job. Where'd you get that shirt? I don't know. <laughs> Had those stripes, those guys just stretching those stripes a little. Well, there was Blanda kicking a field goal to put yeah. you ahead, but then Jim Turner bangs that through at the end. A 23-23 tie. Right, and that was before the, the days of overtime, and if a game ended in a tie, that's exactly what it was. Overtime came in the next year. Here's Clinton Portis now up to the 40-yard line. Let's check in with Melissa. Well, Alex, 
a couple of injury updates for the Broncos. Tight end Shannon Sharp has a partial dislocation of his right elbow. He is done for the rest of the night. And Pro Bowl defensive tackle Chester McLaughlin, he twisted his back. He's expected to return. So that's a big loss with Sharp, and Dwayne Carswell comes in to replace him. And the catch is made here by Rod Smith to move the chains first down to the 46-yard line. And now Greasy going without a huddle. Changing the pace. It was interesting when we were talking to Bill Romanowski last night. And he said the, the two things we have to do defensively is one, put pressure on Brian and not let him get comfortable throwing. And the other thing is, is, is he, we have to stop Rod Smith. He said, because if, if someone's going to make a play, if they really need a play, he knows this, the Broncos are always going to try to go to Rod Smith. Romo taking himself out on this first and 10 now from the 45 yard line. Greasy rolling right, all kinds of time, hit as he throws, and then the pass is incomplete, and there's a flag down. And it's down here, and Charles Woodson is down, too, on that play right where the flag was. Well, he had a fractured shoulder, missed a month, then he missed a lot of practice time this week with a hamstring. He pulled a hamstring this week. They didn't even know if he was going to be able to play. Looking to Bruce Allen before the game, he said he don't know how long he'll be able to play. Defense number 24, five yards, automatic. John, John, here's a guy, you can hear him say he ran into me. Perennial Pro Bowl selection, but is, is Charles Woodson at 80% not a guy you, you want to pick on? Well, you know, the 49ers did last week, the 49ers picked on him uh, last week. Of course, they had Terrell Owens to pick on him. And I think, I, I think if... If he's out there in single coverage, I think that, you know, with the hamstring, with missing practice because of the shoulder, I don't think you have to worry about not throwing on his side. And when he's full speed, and when he's Charles Woodson, when he's playing great, then you might think about it. I think the way he is now, you don't have to worry about it. Different story, first down and 10 at the 49-yard line as Greasy throws. And Lalee was looking inside, then has to look outside. Ashley Lalee, their number one pick. They love him out of the University of Hawaii. And Tory James was right there with him. And I think that was what Bill Romanowski was talking about here is, is to make Brian Greasy throw it when he's not ready. You see here, you see Lalee here, and the ball is coming out a little early. Lalee didn't get turned around, but Brian Greasy, if you watch here, he's made the throw now. He has to get rid of the ball right now. He can't hold it any longer, so he had to throw it just that split second early. And Roderick Coleman is the man who forced the issue. And now the Raiders take a timeout. Timeout open. 10.50 to the half. Raiders 13, Broncos nothing. Field at mile high, second down and 10 after the Raider timeout. Looked like Reese was ready to back away. Dwayne Carswell also moved the tight end. False start. Offense from 89. Five yard penalty remains second down. Yep. That's the man who has replaced Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp on that on that catch. Uh, Melissa was just telling us uh, dislocated that elbow and. That's why he didn't complain. I mean, that's a heck of a lot of pain when that happens. Sharp, their second leading receiver, coming into the game behind Rod Smith. Greasy hangs in the pocket and throws a strike, a perfect strike to Ashley Lalee on second and long for a first down at the Oakland 37. Yeah, we talked about Clint Portis being being speed and Mike Shanahan trying to get speed into this offense. This is the other guy right here, Ashley Lalee. He's probably, he and Clinton Portis are the two fastest guys on this Bronco team. And again, when you have speed, the other team knows you have speed, then you can break things off like this because they give you a cushion because of your speed. And the hero of the game so far is the man who was injured. That is Rod Woodson. Rod Woodson came into this game uh, injured. He had a bad knee. There's a, a personal winning percentage. Rod Woodson, who's been, of course, with the Steelers, then he spent one year with the 49ers, and then he went to Baltimore before coming here. He's played in 16 Monday night games, 15 and 1. Your old uh, charge, John Matuzek, second at 14 and 1. Right, and Rod Woodson, you know, is such a competitor and 
you know, and, and, and winning and playing and being tough is such a big part of what he does. He wasn't even aware of that. And then, no. and you said, you know, how many did you win or lose? The only one he remembered is the loss. And that was in 91 when they lost to the Giants in Pittsburgh. Anthony Dorsett replaces him, number 33, the son of Tony Dorsett, first and 10 at the 38 yard line. And nowhere to run for Clinton Portis, wrapped up by Eric Barton, the fourth year linebacker from Maryland. Raiders have to come into this mile high territory after eight days ago in the second half and overtime, being on the field for 28 minutes and 36 seconds against the 49ers. You know, but it really hasn't shown in this first half. And if it's going to, maybe it won't show until the fourth quarter. Because on the other hand, the Broncos had a bye. Bill Callahan, the first year head coach of the Raiders, watching Greasy on second and 11th throw off his back foot. And it was Portis trying to one-hand it, and he couldn't. There's a flag down. Romanowski with the coverage. That was one of those things where Brian Greasy had way too much time. In fact, he had time to go through his progression, and I think he, by the time he finally threw it, it was like his fourth receiver. The flag was actually away from the play on the other side of the field. It's going to be an automatic Holding first down for Denver. Defense number 22. Five-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Terrence Shaw. And he was holding Ed McCaffrey, and that's where Brian Greasy was trying to go. You see, here's Ed McCaffrey right there, and you see the hold. He just kind of grabbed him and pushed him down right there, and that's why that's why Greasy, I, I said it was about his fifth receiver. He looked over there that left a long time before he came back to the right side. Rod Woodson is back in the game on first and ten. Greasy throws, slant, incomplete, broken up by the former Bronco, Torrey James. Where James played that well. You know, once once a quarterback takes a three-step drop and that corner could look in there and that receiver starts to the inside, he knows exactly what the route is. He knows it's going to be a slant because with a, th a three-step drop, you can't throw anything out. You see, he starts in there. Now watch Torrey James. He just jumps inside because he knows he's not going to go deep. He's just waiting and he jumps to the inside. See the one, two, three. The ball has to come out now and Torrey James played a spot. On second and ten. Greasy pressured and forcing the issue was Romanowski. So Romanowski gets the penetration, creates the incompletion. Romanowski came free on that. He came from the left side. I think it was a little delay because you see he's moving, 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 and then he hits that hole right after the blockers start, and they start to go to the outside, and he gets a free shot at Brian Greasy. Of course, and that's what he was talking about last night, is making him throw the ball before he's ready to throw it. Romo, the former 49er, former Eagle, then here, so this last night, probably make his post-football career home here in Colorado. Third and 10 from the 33, Greasy under pressure again, flips it over the middle to Portis, and Portis takes the ball inside the 20 for a first down to the 17-yard line. And Greasy had to get rid of that one again uh, uh, right at the time he wanted to. They go empty backfield. They're running those crossing patterns. Remember, that's the same pattern right here that Rod Woodson kicked off. You're going to see Portis will go in motion. Now that makes it an empty backfield. He's out here. Then he's going to come across, come underneath. And it was a little screen. They, they, they got the lineman down in front of him. It was a form. It was a form of a middle screen. Look at it from the umpire camp. That's what it looks like with, with his offensive lineman getting down there in front. That was Dan Neal, his right guard, making a block. Shanahan telling us Portis couldn't catch a cold when he first got him, and now he's a decent receiver. In the round, Ashley Lalee stays on his feet, gets to the 13-yard line, fumbled the ball out of bounds to Lawrence Grant and Rod Woodson in on the play. You're right. Mike Shanahan was telling us that about Clint Portis. He said, I don't even think it, as a kid that he even played catch. He said he, he came here and, and he, he they played catch and he, he couldn't catch it. He thought, he thought this guy will never be a pass receiver. He said he worked and he worked and worked. And he said now he not only catches it, but he's a very good pass receiver. Portis on the bench for the moment, taking a rest. You saw Woodson hobble off, and there he is on a knee with eight minutes to go in the half. Mike Anderson is in the backfield. Anthony Dorsett again comes in for Woodson. And on second down and five, they give the ball to Anderson, who takes it to the seven, and that's a first down. Mike Anderson, a great story when they picked him in the sixth round in 2000. 
Terrell Davis was hurt, Alandis Gary got hurt, and Anderson ran for 1,000 yards. And now they moved him to fullback, and then he starts at fullback, then he comes in in the second quarter, he plays tailback. Watch Dan Neal here, here the right guard. That's where it starts. He's going to block Sam Adams. Stay with him, stay with him, stay with him. Get him to the outside, and then cut right off him. This is the Broncos' second long drive. The first ended with a Woodson interception. First and goal, Anderson running into Sam Adams and then moving forward for a yard or so. That's what those big defensive tackles have to do is they have to control that middle and they have to get penetration. And what Sam Adams did there, he got on the Bronco side of the line of scrimmage and there's no way that there's going to be anything if that happened. Watch Sam Adams. He's right here and he's going to get to this point. Now if you have an inside run and Sam Adams gets to that point, there isn't going to be any inside run. Anderson out. Portis comes back into the game with 640 to go. That's McCaffrey in motion. Portis. Spin move. Inside the two. Third and goal. Broke out of an Eric Barton tackle. It was a good lead by Dan Neal. You know, we talked about this Denver Bronco offensive line being athletic. And, and this is one of the moves. Watch Dan Neal here, here, the right guard. Now watch him pull and lead. See him come around and make the block right there. And that was a play right at that time Portis makes a spin. You see you get the pull, the lead, the spin. 13th play of the drive. Tight formation here. Third down and goal. It's in drones in motion. Keep it on the ground. Touchdown, Portis. Men on the field. Defense is the crime for a good. Hurt. Jason Elam with a conversion. Uh, I have west, mid, and east, and I don't have mountain. Yep. It's always been the bane of existence to live in this time zone. So since I've been here, I've had no idea what time it is. <laughs> Marcus Knight runs it back and he's tackled by Ruben Drones at the 20. Digital action is Saturday. First down for the Raiders. Gannon throws. Garner makes the catch. Charlie gets five to the 25 where Ian Gold, the man who created the situation where Romanowski went to Oakland, makes the stop. Mike Shanahan saying that he told Romanowski, look, I'd like you to stay, but Gold's going to get your reps. So if you're going to stay here, you're going to be a happy backup. And I think that that was part of the, the speed that Mike Shanahan wanted to add. And this time we talked about Portis and the Lee, but on defense, it's Ian Gold. And, and when you put Ian Gold in there, these are probably the three fastest linebackers in the league. Second down and five. That's going over the middle. Brown gets taken down by Trevor Price, and this is Ray Rose's unit, and Ray in his own way making a little bit of a comeback, and there's an interesting connection here. Rhodes, four years, the head coach of Philadelphia, and there's Ray, went to Green Bay for one forgettable year, and the Washington is the defensive coordinator, but Ray Rhodes gave Bill Callahan his opportunity to coach in the NFL. He hired him as the line coach in Philadelphia when Ray got the job in 95. Right, and also at, at, at that time, John Gruden was the offensive coordinator, and Bill Gallahan and John Gruden worked together. And then, of course, they both came to the Oakland Raiders together. Third down and four, Gannon under pressure. Chase launches it. It flutters and wide open is Garner. Gannon was able to buy so much time that Garner somehow got that behind Kanoi Kennedy and makes the catch. You know, and that's exactly what I thought they had to do against that two-man rush or nine men. If you get that much time, Gannon has to get out and run with the ball, and then it's like a scramble drill. And that's what Charlie Garner was doing. He was just running the hook. He sees Gannon get to the outside, and then he takes off. You see no rush here. Now, now get outside. There's only a three-man rush. Now get outside. Now go to a scramble drill. That's exactly what they did, and Gannon launches it to Garner. 49 yards to the 25-yard line, and that's caught by Roland Williams for a gain of three, the tight end. And I'll bet you that that was the adjustment that they talk about. You know, when we get that 
tour that three man rush it's tough to throw against eight defensive backs or, or, or defenders It's tough to throw against nine defenders. But if you run get out of that pocket and stand out there and then just play a scramble drill. That's one of the ways to beat that defense. Gannon 12 out of 13. He's also run the ball three times for 12 yards. Weedley is the running back here. Gannon to throw it again underneath. Caught by Wheatley. Breaks a tackle just for the moment. And then is taken down at the 18-yard line. You know, one thing, when, you're, when your quarterback is, is as hot as Rich Gannon is now, it starts with the offensive line, and he has good pass protection. Watch this. I mean, we've seen him where they've only brought two or three. Now they're bringing three and trying to spy on him. But they just pack that whole thing in there. And when you give Gannon time like that, he's going to find someone somewhere. Got a little help from Lincoln Kennedy, who also got a little help from the officials by not calling that. Third down and three. From the 18. Garner in motion. Backfield is vacant. Gannon throws, caught 12-yard line, and Jerry Rice, who caught a ball on the first play from scrimmage in the game tonight, makes his second grab. On that play before that where he threw it outside there, Jerry Rice was open on a on a crossing pattern. I'm surprised that that's what Rich Gannon does so well is find those openings on that cross. And, and I, I don't know if Jerry Rice said anything to him or not, or maybe Rich saw him and said, geez, I should have gone there. So he came right back and went to him. Raiders passing twice as much as rushing. Actually, it's more like 18-4 because three of those rushes are Gannon scrambles. So they've only called four running plays in the huddle. Two-minute warning. Good first half in Denver on this 500th Monday. Raiders by six. Two-minute warning. They have one timeout. Denver has none from the 12-yard line. Gannon throws, caught by Rice. He gets dragged down at the seven-yard line by Al Wilson. I don't think the Raiders can worry about passing too much. I mean, this is what they do the best, and it's not all deep passing when they have these these crosses these these short type things and you'll get back get rid of the ball quickly and and they, and they do it so well and they're they're so successful at that why worry about the other things why not just do and continue to do what you do best and when you have a guy who's 15 of 16 keep going to the well Gannon little fade into the end zone caught by Jerry Rice for the 200th touchdown of his career What's symmetry? 500 Mondays, 40 Mondays for him, 200 touchdowns for him, 250 straight games catching a pass. Did you just feel that this whole series was going to be Jerry Rice? That one time I said he was open and he didn't go to him, and then he came back and he went to him, and then he gets a touchdown here. And we just see here the Raiders are going to go for two. Leading by 12, they'll go for two. This is his 189th touchdown reception. He has rushed for 10, and he recovered a fumble in the end zone for the other. 200 for the amazing Jerry Rice. And he ran what we call the short out and up. I mean, that was a play that we used to run when I was coaching the Raiders, and you would just go like you were running a short out and then turn it up and throw it to the second pylon. And on that symmetry hold theme, on, he's on. caught four balls tonight. Each of the catches, six yards. Two-point conversion. Gannon to the back of the end zone. Caught, hauled in by Jerry Porter for the deuce. And the Raiders trying to break this four-game losing streak after starting the season with four wins, lead by two touchdowns. I tell you, Rich Gannon is about as hot as a quarterback could be in the first half, isn't he? I mean, he's getting back there again. As I say, though, it all starts with protection. He's had great protection, but he's getting back there. He's getting his reads and, and getting the ball out of there. That is beautiful. But they've had that. But, I mean, if you give Gannon time like that and you have all these receivers, Running these crosses, these short tight patterns, you know he's going he's to find the open guy. All you have to get is a step, and Rich Gannon will put that ball on you. Jerry Rice, 16 glorious seasons with San Francisco, two here. Rice became the all-time touchdown leader 
on a Monday night a few years back. And there it is, 200 for Jerry, 161 for Emmett. Marcus Allen third at 145. And in the history of this series, 33 for Jerry. Emmett scored 24, Marcus 19. Did you see that guy that was congratulating Jerry Rice down there? He was a pretty good receiver himself. That was Fred Bullitt, who's the wide receiver coach for the Raiders now. And Janikowski booms one into the end zone for a touchback. The 500th day. You know, and the Raiders came in here with a lot of life. You you would think the Broncos coming coming off a of bye would be the one that had all the life. Not true. The Raiders have in this first half. It's been that kind of a season all over the NFL. Smith makes the catch and he's out of bounds. Remember, the Broncos do not have a timeout. Another look now. Go back to Jerry Rice. Short out. Oh. <laughs> Jerry Rice. Picking the perfect time to do it. Well, you know, and the thing about about Jerry Rice that is so impressive is, again, that he works hard to get where he is. I mean, he's not the most natural of wide receiver, but he's the best that's ever played. Second and fourth, Carswell makes the catch, and now James will try to keep him in bounds and does. Carswell trying to get out of bounds, and coming in to finish him off was Dorsett. Dorsett almost came in and finished him off in more ways than one. He knocked his hat right off the field. And they have to go without a huddle. They're trying to go no huddle. They have no timeouts. And no helmet for the tight end. And Greasy's going to be taken down in the arms of Trace Armstrong. And for Trace Armstrong, a milestone. Started with the Bears, went to Miami, 100 career sacks. Second and 15. And that's caught up at the 36-yard line, taken in by Ashley Lalee. Now that's why when you waste those timeouts early, they really, they always come back to haunt you. And now Oakland does Denver a favor by taking a timeout. Bill Callahan and Chuck Bresnahan, the defensive coordinator, over who called that timeout and, and why was it called? Denver doesn't have a timeout. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the things that, that I noticed that has kind of gone downhill, I think, in the NFL is, is clock management, time <laughs> yeah. management. It seems like times outs are, are wasted and not properly managed. The third and seven, and now the Broncos, instead of trying to launch one and get in field goal range, give it to Portis, and they'll be content just to go into the locker room and regroup down by two touchdowns. Jeff Jager, this ugly 53-yard field goal in the final minute to get the Los Angeles Raiders a 23-20 win. In 1999, after a 53-yard Jason Elam field goal to tie the game at the end of regulation, Orlando's Gary 24 yards to the house. Broncos win it by three in overtime. The next year, Elam from 41 yards at the gun to give the Broncos a 27-24 win. Happy birthday to Monday night. Happy birthday to Monday night. Everybody, happy birthday, birthday to Monday, Monday night. night. And we know how old they are. 500th Monday night football celebration. You know, when Rune Arledge and Pete Rozelle first came up with the idea of playing NFL games on Monday night, most people thought it would flop. <clears throat> Wrong answer. Monday night football has been the longest running TV series in history. And for 33 seasons and 499 nights, it has been the most exciting, most entertaining night of the week. For Tony Dorsett. Look out, he's oh, got great no. speed. It's 99 yards and a half. What a football player that young man is. He throws to the end zone. It is yes. off for the touchdown by Davis. Lord, you can take me now. I've seen it all. Going for Golden Richards, and he went. Oh, beautiful catch. 
like a route and then it got wild and what will the 500th Monday night be get? I think this one may get wild before it's over. I agree with you. Janikowski's tip fielded at the goal line. Scotty Montgomery brings it back out to the 24 yard line and let's check in with Melissa. Well, uh, Bill Callahan told us yesterday that the key in this game was getting off to a fast start. Well, he was ecstatic at halftime, had a huge smile on his face. He said this could not be going any better. He called Rod Woodson, who had that interception return for a touchdown, a turnover temple center. He said it three times. I asked him if they were going to run the ball more in the second half with the lead. He said, absolutely. That's what we're going to do. Hmm. Well, turnover temple center? Yeah. I don't know what that means, but I mean, that was a big, big play in this game, that Rod Woodson interception. So the three times for emphasis, and Rod Smith gets taken down after he picks up a first down. The graphic went by quickly, but it's very significant to note the Broncos through the years have had a tremendous amount of success coming from behind to beat the Raiders, but never have they erased a 14-point deficit. And that big turnover, that one at the bottom right there, that was the play. That was the Woodson pick. On first and ten, Portis through the middle for a yard. And you could see that the Raiders didn't have any rushing. I think they had 14 yards rushing in the first half, but they didn't need it. You know, it's not one of those things where their run has been stuffed or they couldn't run. I think they're they're passing and Rich Gannon were so successful and so hot that that they really didn't need it. Greasy 67 percent but for 98 Portis averaging a little better than four yards a carry and through the air Smith four grabs but only 28 yards in the first half. Second and nine Lillie in motion. They give it to Smith who gives it back to Lillie and the number one pick from the University of Hawaii gets hogtied at the 49 yard line by Eric Barton. You know, there's a number of ways that you want to use speed on your team and, and one obviously is to have a wide receiver run deep the other one is to have him run across and the third way is this on a reverse hand it to him and get him out here in open space without throwing it to him or someone better block Eric Barton yeah. or the guy's going to get uh, a pretty hard flop here boom 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 
You know, when you when you get rivalry games like this, you get tackles like that. Third down and two. Greasy. And he's got the first down to Ed McCaffrey at the 46-yard line, tackled by Woodson. Ed McCaffrey's a beauty, isn't he? <laughs> you see those shoulder pads? He said he first came here and he wanted the smallest shoulder pads. Everything Ed McCaffrey does is to get light stuff. Small shoulder pads, no hip pads, no thigh pads. In fact, he wears a size smaller shoe so that he can be faster. And then he cuts the toe out because it's a size smaller. Look at here it is. So he cuts the toe out right here and wears a size smaller so he can run faster. And he's made a remarkable comeback from a season ending opening night injury last year. As Portis gets taken down behind the line of scrimmage by Napoleon Harris, a rookie from Northwestern. And he said after after that injury, and, and they had to put a titanium rod in his leg, and he said he really wasn't sure until he went to training camp if he was going to be able to come back. And because of the no huddle, the Raiders had trouble getting the right personnel in, and the Raiders were forced to use a timeout because of the no huddle. On ESPN. After the Oakland timeout, second down, 11. Raiders nearly jump, but get back on side. And McCaffrey makes the catch for a short gain to the 41. And I think one of the things that somewhere had to had to affect this Bronco offense is when Shannon Sharp goes out. You know, now now he was a big part of this game plan because they do things with Shannon Sharp that you don't do with normal tight ends. You're not going to do it Dwayne Carswell. And then, you know, I mean, they split him out and they put him in motion. They put him in, you know, in the backfield. They move him all over the place. And then if we look at Sharp, when you see him go down, he dislocated his elbow. Now he's out of the game. I think they have to change their whole offense. And Greasy right now in that whole new offense. It's McCaffrey. Flag comes in, as you see, at the 31-yard line. In fact, two flags, one down at the uh, 37 as well. And then, of course, the, the Broncos had time to adjust at halftime, and it looks like to me that one of the adjustments is to get Ed McCaffrey more involved in the game. There were fouls by both teams. Holding defense number 20 and pass interference offense number 87. Those fouls offset. We play third down. So McCaffrey pushed off and Torrey James with the defensive holding. So you wonder which one came first. So there went what would have been the fourth catch of the game for McCaffrey. Back we come to the 40 yard line. Third down and four. Early third quarter. A win for Oakland. They're a game out of first. A loss for Oakland. The three games out of first. Huge pivotal game. Third down and four. Greasy over the middle and it's incomplete. And looking for a flag was McCaffrey. There is none. Yeah, I think McCaffrey is really taking some of Shannon Sharp's uh, a place. Like I said, on that one, they they put him in the slot, and and that's kind of you know the the slot is a Y who is a tight end, and, and you, you see him here, and he's gonna he's gonna start to the inside. Now it's an option. If the guy goes outside, then you go back to the outside. It looked like Torrey James held him again on that play, didn't it? And Shaw Shaw was in on the play. Terrence Shaw, McCaffrey, he saw him put his hands up. Nothing doing. They'll punt. Mike Anor just signed during the bye week to replace Tom Ruin, who'd been here for a decade. And he bounces it at the 10, and the Broncos will stop it before it gets into the end zone, pinning the Raiders deep. Lenny Walls got down there with 10.40 remaining in the third. Oakland taking over, up by 14 in the renewal of one of the great rivalries in the National Football League. Raiders back of the four. Gannon, another completion caught by Garner. Rich Gannon tonight is now 17 of 18. The only incompletion was actually caught, a pass that was caught by Charlie Garner, who was just barely out of bounds. Yeah, Rich Gannon has, has started off this game up to this point and played about as perfectly as a quarterback can play. Numbers to the first half. No rushing stats to show you, really, because they're not running the ball. Garner, three catches. Rice, four catches, including touchdown number 200. 
Gannon surveying, throws, caught by Wheatley underneath. And he gets taken down by Ian Gold, close to a first down. Again, you know, Rich Gannon is such a big part of this and his vision and being able to get rid of the ball quickly, but pass protection. I think the, the offensive line of the Raiders have been dominating the, the defense of the of the Broncos. And here's a pass chart for the first half, and you see the distribution two for two behind the line of scrimmage left, one for one, five for six to the left, three for three in the middle, five for five on the right. He's only thrown two balls over 15 yards, but he hasn't had to. And you can see how he spread the ball across the field. It's not just right or left or middle. It's all equal, equally distributed across the field. And the play clock is already down to zero. And that's a delay a game. And Rich Gannon was signaling that he wanted a new clock. The officials took longer than expected to spot the ball, checking out for the first down. There'll be no foul for delay again. Please put five seconds on the play clock. Five seconds on the play clock, please. Well, they'd actually measured for the first. Thank you. Right, and that's what Rich Gannon was talking about, that, you know, you know they didn't give him the full time. He knew that, and he saw that. And then they got it right. But he still has to get the ball off down. Yeah, and now they've run out of time. But not, I'm confused to the extent that I've never heard of a situation where you put five seconds on the play clock. I mean, what would normally happen after a stoppage is you'd go back to 25 seconds on the play clock. And that's what Rich Gannon is asking for. And I think that's right, that he should get a full, full play clock. Because if they're only going to get five seconds on the play clock, then he shouldn't have huddled. The referee did not inform the quarterback of the five seconds on the clock. <laughs> Please put five seconds on the game clock. Okay, so now five the Raiders, seconds on the, game clock, the Raiders have to get up to the line of scrimmage right now. They can't huddle sure. up. Well, the interesting thing was they put five on the clock. He announced it to the crowd. Gannon said they didn't hear it. Now they, they still haven't wound the clock. Now they do. First and ten from the 14-yard line. Gannon. And the delay doesn't bother him one iota. Rice makes his fifth catch of the night. First down at the 29. You know, I was thinking the same thing. Let's Tyrone Whitley. Whitley, we're going to see. We're going to see the blitz. Al Wilson come straight up the middle. Watch that. That's what you have to have. You know, we talk about the offensive line blocking, but when they blitz, your backs also have to block. Tyrone Whitley was perfect on that block. From the 29 on first down. Gannon. One completion after another. Jerry Rice to the 36. That's a gain of seven. Gannon's on a pace right now to set an NFL record for most completions in a season. Warren Moon with the Oilers in 91 404. Now, Gannon had 232 coming into the game. That's a 464 pace. He'd break it by a mile. Well, remember in the second game of the season, they did this same type of thing. There's Warren Moon right there. Working radio tonight from the sideline. Second down and three from the 36. Gannon, 20 of 21. And that is caught. Yes. Rice makes the catch, straddles the sideline. First down. Yeah, one of the, the matchups that we've been watching all night is Lincoln Kennedy against Trevor Price. Here it is right here. And you see Price is trying to trying to bull rush him, but Lincoln Kennedy is so big, he just puts his chest out there and takes it. But they they really this this offensive line of the of the Raiders has done an excellent job of protection tonight. Three receivers to the left. Garner set in the backfield. First down and ten. Little flip. Porter. And a good defensive play by Izell Reese to penetrate and stop at the 50. And you see Jerry Rice missed a block out there. You know, he was telling us last night, he said that I'm in search of a perfect game. He said the closest he ever came, he fought was Super Bowl 23. And the first thing that he brought up was blocking. You see, it's going to be a little screen. He has to be the lead blocker. His guy is the guy that made the tackle. You know, you know, and he clapped his hands together like, I mean, he was upset. He knew that that was his play, and he had to make that block to make that play. Reese shaken on the play. Injury timeout, 722 left in the third. 
Not that many years ago. Oh. Oakland to L.A. and then back to Oakland. The Raiders have not beaten the Broncos in Denver since they moved back to Oakland in 95. But tonight, speaking of perfect games, that's about as close as you can get. Second down and eight after the injury timeout at the 50-yard line. Raider offensive line doing a magnificent job. Caught, jolly, tight end, forced out by Ian Gold along the Raiders' sideline. You know, and the big thing is you look at Rich Gannon's jersey and how clean it is, and you realize why. He hasn't been hit. He hasn't been knocked down. There haven't been any batted balls, and he hasn't been sat. Now, that will usually equal a very clean quarterback jersey. Now, if you're the defense, you don't want a clean quarterback jersey. Rich Gannon is way too clean if you're a Denver Bronco defender. John, the Raider offensive line is pitching a perfect game. Yes, they are. Zeroes across. Four and five, and there is the 15th straight completion. Caught by Roland Williams, and he moves the sticks. First down, 41. And again, if, if, if Rich Gannon has that type of type of protection, it's just like skeleton. You know, you do a drill like this where you just have your receivers and no line. And when he can have this time, look at the separation. I mean, the closest defender to him when he's standing back there to throw is about three yards. Now, now he has great vision lanes and also great throwing lanes. And that's created again. They're trying to stunt. They're trying to do something to get to Rich Gannon. And whatever they do, the Raiders are picking up. And you can see Trevor Price on that play. Looks like he hurt his left leg. Well, he comes out. Their best defensive lineman. But tonight, that Raider offensive front doing just a phenomenal job. Gannon at 23 out of 24. Seven different receivers. Again, of those eight rushes, three were Gannon scrambles. So they have called in the huddle only five running plays. Uh, and you just play the game just to play it. I mean, there's no, I don't, I don't believe that, you know, if you pass a lot in one game, you have to come back and run. Just, just play. Just go play and do what you do best. And that's exactly what the Raiders are doing. First and ten. Just a three-man rush again. Garner. Good move to get away from gold, and then he takes the ball down to the 35. A little dink here, a little dunk there, and down the field they go. Frank Middleton, the, the left guard, knocked his guy down, and he was doing a, a Joe Frazier type of bouncing over him like he just got in the knockout. Frank Middleton's quite a character. Watch him. He's the left guard, number 73 there. You see now, he's, he's fighting his guy right there, and then he's going to get right there. That's where he got his knockdown. See him stand up, and then he goes after that. He goes into a little dance. Down goes Frazier. <laughs> Second down and four. And Gannon has to take a timeout. And that is the second used by Oakland here in the second half. 21-7 Raiders. Second down and four now from the 35-yard line. Gannon pump fake comes back this way. Another completion caught by Tim Brown, and that's a first down. And let's check in with Melissa. Well, Alan, injury update on Broncos defensive end Trevor Price. He has a sprained left knee. He was in a tremendous amount of pain. He's out for the rest of the game. And Al, he already had seven sacks on the season. Seven sacks, but they've neutralized him tonight. And Kavika Pittman's going to move over to play that spot. And Reggie Hayward comes in where Pittman was. First down and 10 now. Gannon 25 of 26. And Gannon throws. That's caught by Brown and Mobley takes him down. You know, John, you asked Gannon last night, what do you have to do to win? He said, we need to start fast. They did. We can't have turnovers. They haven't. And we have to be good on third down. And they are five out of seven. Yeah, and uh, I, was, I was just thinking the same thing. Everything that... He said they had to do, they've done, but he's doing it and, and feeling so comfortable about it. I mean, right now, Rich Gannon is just having his way with this Denver Bronco defense. And they can't stop him. Second and eight. Over the middle, caught Jerry Porter for the touchdown. Look at Rich Gannon, he just walks off the field like that's what you're supposed to do. 
And Gary, the crowd and Shanahan are shell shocked right now. Gary Porter is the inside receiver right here. He's the slot. And you see it's against the zone. He just runs right through the zone and they get it over the linebacker was a cover two and in front of the safety. I was just saying Rich Gaynor's having his way. This this looks and, and I know it's not easy. I don't mean to say this is easy, but it looks way too easy for him, doesn't it? 27 of 28 for 260 and Leckler drops the snap and then Janikowski tries to turn the corner but can't. It's the only good thing that's happened to Denver in a while. And there's a flag down. I don't know. Do you think Janikowski was trying to turn the corner there? I think he was he was thinking about it. I don't he, think he could. I was thinking he, he was trying to get to Aurora and turn the corner from there. Right. I think I think his body was telling him to keep the going and his no mind good. told him to, to stop. There's no foul for unnecessary roughness. All the action started in bounds. <laughs> well the Raiders re remember started that drive at their four so they go 96 yards in 12 plays and in a game they have to win they're up by 20. You know at night it's so beautiful that there's so many lights on in buildings. Yeah. I mean when you think like in office buildings and stuff that the lights would be out at night. You would think unless people are working late. Yeah but I mean it's just the beauty thing with all the lights on. From the 19 yard line Monte Rager comes back to the 30 and I know a lot of cities I know Pittsburgh is one of them they they asked the employees to leave them on at night knowing we're going to take those aerial shots. Maybe that's that's how it happens. Let's watch Jerry Porter again. Now here's a cover two. You got the corner coming up. Safety here. Deep safety here. Corner here. So this is the two of it. And what Porter does is he just splits these two safeties. Now you have to get your mic down here. So he gets behind the mic and in front of the safeties. Now watch him all the way and you see the safeties and see how he splits them right there and he throws between the safeties and over the middle linebacker. Porter, an emerging star, making it 27-7 and then Greasy on first down throws. And that's caught by Smith on a slant with under four minutes now to play in the third. You know, coming into this game, you'd think the, you know, the Raiders, in those four losses, they had two overtime games and you'd think that they were kind of beat up and and the and the Broncos coming off a of bye and you never know what's going to happen. On second and four, never more so as Lalee makes the catch. Sean, then, then this year, I mean, we we seem to say it every year. These games are just so unpredictable. But I mean, this this is off the charts this season. I mean, every week there were two or three games. You go, how in the world did that happen? And then you know which team is which. I mean, the you know the Philadelphia Eagles. We see them and they look like a great team. And then look what happened to them yesterday. Right. And the Jets seem to be ready to implode. And they go to San Diego and route them. And the Broncos, some people thought they were the best balance and the best team in the league. First and ten, Greasy throws. That's caught by Lalee, but they're picking up a little bit of yardage only at a clip. Rod Woodson, who's been in and out of the game, and of course had the biggest play of the game. But uh, Oakland and Denver, I mean, you, you know what it's like down there. You know what it's like up here right now on a second and five. As Portis with a flag thrown, and that comes from the umpire, normally meaning holding. I'll tell you, it was always wild down there. I mean, these these fans, uh, you know, were always you know some of the best fans in the National Football League. I mean, they they love their Broncos, and they and they come here and they let you know it when you're the visitor. Holding defense number 97, five yard penalty, automatic. E from Salam, the tackle is down. The call is on Perella for holding. Here it's from the umpire cam here and you just see here's Perella right here and you see him start off and <laughs> he, he just grabs Ben Hamilton and takes him down. That's what you have to do. I mean that's the kind of stuff that goes on down there that you just have to have to grab and, and then fall on anything you can. The oddity on that play is that when the umpire throws the flag but 99 percent of the time it's holding. But 99% of that 99% is offensive holding. It's, it's on the offensive guy. Salon out. Blake Brockemeyer is in. First and 10 at the 34-yard line. Swing. Portis. And Portis is taken down by Derek Gibson. 
You know, one thing that the that the Raider defense has really done well tonight is they've tackled well, and that's that's a big part of you know we talk about their offense and Rich Gannon, but their defense is also tackling well. They tackled so well that Portis can't get up from that tackle. Clock stops for the injury. And you see Brian Greasy just looks right out there, gets the ball to Portis, and that's what you want to do with your speed. You want to get him out in the open field. But they Derek Gibson played that real well. You know, is 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 he you have to hold on there and just wait. You know, just wait for someone else to get there. You know, don't let him just get right by you right now. See, he holds him up, and then Romanowski is able to get there and get the hit. That's the shot that's going to force Portis out of the game for at least one play over now and and they're telling me that it's just a halfway point it's one of those things where your body says it's basketball season the schedule says it's halfway salam back in the game second and three smith makes the catch picks up the first down at the 21 yard line he from salam has been a been a good addition for this bronco team too as we see that they're going no huddle here He's a, he's a left tackle, and they thought Brockermeyer would, would be the starting left tackle. He's from Slide. He's beat him out. And McCaffrey with a short slant. Barton makes the tackle. Game of about four. And in the half to go in the third. When you're down 27 to 7, you, you have to start speeding things up now because it's not just the regular flow of a game. You know, you, you have to start thinking we you know we have to get a score and then we have to get another one then we have to get another one you're not just thinking of ball control and time leading it even tougher of course with the absence of Shannon Sharp no flag on a near jump and instead this is Portis taken down by Travian Smith at the 19 yard line that's where the Raiders have been I mean they've been they've been stout and tough inside so there's not much running in there and they've been quick in pursuing to the outside and tackling well See the jump right there. Keep thinking it's Howie Long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. It. I know. And you just see the burst though that Portis has. I mean, I mean that play was nothing, but you could just see that little thing right at the end where it went. Poof, you know? Cooper wearing number 75. Here comes Nixon on a blitz, and the catch is made by McCaffrey. So a big key third down conversion to take it to the 10-yard line. Yeah, and this was remember remember one time they were worried about Brian Greasy in the fourth quarter and could could he bring could he bring the Broncos back and and you remember all those years when John Elway was there and John Elway could bring a team back better than anyone had ever played. See what happens tonight. 27-7 Oakland then to three. That's really scary. That's big big time scary. <laughs> Halloween treat at the oh. Espen zone. Fourth quarter commences. First and ten for Denver at the 11 yard line. Greasy under pressure is able to avoid the sack as Barton came racing through and then goes out of bounds just about at the line of scrimmage. But scary. That's a little scary uh, for Greasy looking at Barton. I know it because Ephraim Salam I think is hurt. I mean he didn't even he didn't even get a hand on his guy and that and that pressure came from the outside and Greasy saw it or felt it, and that's where he went. When he saw that pressure come from his left, you see the pressure right now. They just go right by Salam. He goes to do a jump pass to the right, and where the pressure it initially came from is where he escaped to. Actually went out at the nine-yard line, picked up two second down, and eight. Everybody out of the backfield. Dumped off over the middle and hit hard as Clinton Portis at the five-yard line by Napoleon Harris. You know that, also goes down. Uh, excuse me, I was going to say that was a, a middle screen. What they did is they take their, their, their center and two guards and, and put them downfield and then throw in behind them. Most screen passes are to the outside, outside right or left. That one was a screen pass to the middle. It is 12 men on the field against Oakland. An elder receiver by the offense downfield. Five-yard penalty remains set now. Sorry, initially put both hands to the head and signaled against Oakland. Yeah, what it was, because it was a screen, and we said that the three linemen, watch, the, the, the guard, the guard here in the center, will get downfield to form the screen. Now, they can't go downfield till the ball's thrown. 
You see him there? And Dan Neal starts early before the ball's thrown. He's way down there. So it was a screen pass, but you have to time it up. You have to wait, wait, wait until the ball is thrown. Then you can go. So Mike Carey corrected his original signal. Second down at 13. Greasy over the middle. That's caught as he was falling down. Portis makes the grab at the 10. So now it's third down, big play, third and eight for a first, nine for a touchdown. You know, but needing, needing three scores, I think that this is is, is two down area yep. here. I think this is something that even though there's 14 minutes, just about 14 minutes to go, you still need three touchdowns. So I think that you would have to go for it on fourth down in this situation. I do too. You're down by where to come. Right, you're down by 17. You're still going to need three scores. Greasy, perfect on this drive, eight of eight for 42 yards. Good protection into the end zone, dropped. Carswell, Gibson might have gotten a hand on it. Might have. Oh, Mike Shanahan doesn't agree with us, Al. He's going, he's going for the field goal attempt here. Or a fake, you know. Remember, Burline is going to be the holder instead of Ruins. So if you're going to fake one, you've got a quarterback to throw it. Yeah, I was talking about Ephraim Salam and saying that you know I think that he's hurt because he's really having trouble. I mean, he had he had trouble with speed, and that time, that last play, he had trouble with a bull rush. 27-yard attempt, no fake, and the kick is good. So they still need three scores and at least two touchdowns. 13-24. Remaining in the fourth, Oakland's lead is 27 to 10. Milestone tonight. Raiders, who were the kings of Monday night for many years prior to the, the decade of the 90s, trying to become kings again, leading by 17 as the kickoff is fielded by Marcus Knight. To the 29-yard line. Gannon has now completed 19 consecutive passes. The record inside a game is 20. And there it is. Montana's 22 over a two-game span. Ken Anderson of the Bengals in 82. And Hugh Millen did it over a two-game span, but Young inside one game in 96. So the inside one-game mark is 20, with Anderson and Young holding it. And if Gannon can complete his next attempt, He'll be on that chart and still going. And the way he's had his way all night, there's no reason to believe that he's not going to complete his next 10 or 12 or 15. We saw Shannon Sharp and Civvies on the bench. Passing formation, obviously. There's number 20. 20 straight. Porter, who scored the last Oakland touchdown, makes this grab for a gain of six. Now the incompletion when we go back, I mean it seems so inconsequential at the time, but this may have been actually in bounds. They, they ruled Garner who catches the ball here out of bounds. One foot down. The other foot is down. It wasn't worth a challenge at that point, but that looked like a completion. He had the ball in both feet. <laughs> yeah. That's the definition of a completion. Sure, but it was such a short pass and an inconsequential play that it wasn't challenged. Does he get 21? And there's the single game record, and it's caught by Charlie Garner. I mean, these a lot of these are long handoffs, but they're right there, 29 out of 30 for 272 yards. Remember the first game of the season that we did the New England Patriots against the Pittsburgh Steelers? Tom Brady had the same thing. That's that's what they did against the Steelers. And the Raiders came back the very next week against the Steelers, and Gannon did this type of thing then, and then. Then they kind of got away from it, and now they're going back to the way they beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. On opening night, it was New England throwing on 25 consecutive plays. First and 10, and he one-hops it. It would have tied Montana's record, the overall record, and he one-hopped it. So for the first time tonight, he throws a ball that's not on target. And that fan had a reason for the first time tonight to stand up. Look at this, he just throws it sidearm, but but he had a knuckle on it. It came out as a knuckleball. So the count is one and two. <laughs> I mean you expected split finger and he came out knuckle. Second and ten from the 40-yard line. Gannon starts a new streak. Rice and 
Jerry with that move gets the first down. So Rice catches it about a yard and a half shy of the marker and then is able to force his way through and by Delta O'Neill to pick up the first. You know, last night we were talking to Jerry Rice about about Rich Gannon. He said, you know, he played with Montana and Montana was a perfectionist. He said with Gannon, he said it's all about knowledge. He said he works harder at learning what he has to do and he says he knows this offense better than anyone. The amazing Jerry Rice. We, we sat with him last night and he looks like he's about 28. From the 49 yard line. Gannon throws to Garner. Chased by Burt Berry who knocks him down but not until he picks up a first down. And the natives get restless. Yep, yep, because their defense is on its heels and they, you know, and Rich Gannon and his offense has really put and kept this Bronco defense on their heels. Gannon, as you can see from 99 on, as a Raider, what he has done, I mean, the, the career has been amazing. Drafted by New England, I'm not even sure why they drafted him or what position they wanted him to play. Was traded before he ever showed up in Foxborough to Minnesota. Was actually out of football for one year in the early 90s. Then he gets reborn in Kansas City after a brief stint in Washington. Comes to Oakland and then plays the best football of his life in his mid-30s. Well, you know, he was exactly what John Gruden was looking for. And then he kind of kind of built his offense around Rich Gannon. And the whole thing was about Rich Gannon. But I remember when he came out of college... He was a 4-5-40. I mean, he was as fast as, as defensive backs and wide receivers at the time, and the Patriots wanted to make him a receiver, a defensive back. Maybe we're looking at the reincarnation of Blanda. If Gannon, like Rice, looks like he can go on forever. Doesn't he ever? Touchdown! Gannon to Rice! That is amazing. You know, they go and they dink and they dunk and they throw the short, and then you think they're not going to go deep. You think Jerry Rice can't go deep anymore, and then boom, they hit you with the deep one. They, we talked about having his way all night, and he really has. And you watch Jerry Rice run, and maybe not the fastest of receivers, but if he gets out in front, and no one ever catches him. And you know, if you watch him run, he has no wasted movement. His head doesn't go up and down. And now here they're going to come with a blitz. They're going to bring pressure. Great protection again. Formed a perfect pocket for Gannon. That's as many guys as Denver has sent at Gannon all night. And he takes advantage of it. And Janikowski for the point after. Another record for Jerry Rice, which we'll detail when we come back to Denver, where the Raiders lead 34 to 10. Say hi to Diane. One of my favorite people. Diane's sleeping. She has to be asleep. We have for Good Morning America. She loves football. Big football fan. Maybe she tapes it. <laughs> we hope. And has a Nielsen book. From two yards in the end zone out to the 20 yard line comes Scotty Montgomery. 10:36 remaining in the fourth quarter. Everybody thought it would be all Broncos in Denver. A hot team against the Cole team. It's just symptomatic of everything that's going on in the NFL this year. Go figure. That's not bad. Life without a neutral corner. Yeah. <laughs> Great lyrics. From the 21. Ashley Lilly makes the catch and is close to a first down as he gets out past the 30 and the Broncos will have to go just about the rest of the way without a huddle. Down by 24. We'll catch you. Get you caught up with Jerry Rice and the mark I alluded to before the commercial in just a second. That's caught by Carswell. In addition to all of the other marks, there is a, a record for combined yards. And Jerry Rice now holds that mark. 21,817. Goes by Walter Payton on that touchdown. Brian Mitchell is third. Now that's yards from scrimmage that's rushing and receiving and also returns kickoff and punts it's known as all-purpose yardage in college then there's a separate category yards from scrimmage only which is receiving and rushing but Jerry now the combined leader as Barton comes crashing through for the sack of greasy inside the 30 as you say Barton comes crashing through unblocked no one picked him up he just comes from the from the outside on a, on a blitz and he's going to be there and you're going to see him right here and 
he just comes, he just takes off the tackle, goes to stand out to, to, to go to the outside. Matt Lepsis and Barton just runs right inside him. Hey, Eric Barton's not a bad player. You know, he has a lot of quickness. He's, he's, a, he's a tough guy. He's a good tackler. And he's a good blitzer because he has that, that, that quick first step. Leads the team in sacks. Second down and 19. Greasy guns it, and that's incomplete. Lalee crossing over the middle. Brian goes down, and we go to the field. Once again, the birthday girl. What you got, boys? <laughs> Well, Al, John's been talking about Broncos left tackle Ephraim Salam not looking like he's 100%. Well, he's not. He twisted his left ankle on the Broncos' last drive. He's just trying to play through it. And with all these Bronco injuries, you have to imagine that they'd wish the bye week was next week as opposed to last week. Instead, they're at Seattle. Yeah, that's a good point. They came in so healthy, 15 days off. Came off the win at New England. And as you say, Melissa, next week at Seattle. And that's no longer an AFC West game now that the Seahawks are in the NFC West. Third and 19. Greasy throws, and Smith tries to stay in. Does he? One official looks at the other. They're both looking at each other now. They haven't called anything. Meanwhile, the, the clock is still running, They and they say no catch, number one, and have to, they should put a couple of seconds more back on the clock. That's, that's one of the things about officials is there's there's no sign for I don't know or I didn't see it. Yeah, that was incomplete. I mean, yep. that was outside. But, 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 but you have to call something. And one official comes up and doesn't call anything. Then he, he looks at the other guy and he doesn't call anything either. So all they have is about a couple seconds stare off. Now Mike Ganor to punt. Line of scrimmage is the 30. Short kick. Fair catch called for by Tim Brown. He's forced into all kinds of duty. Philip Buchanan, the good-looking rookie, injured a couple of weeks ago, had been doing a great job punt returning. So now that chore falls to TB. 8.42 left in the fourth. The Raiders, there's six possessions tonight. Every possession has, in the... Uh, Every possession has resulted in a score, two field goals, three touchdowns. This is possession number six right here. And there it is. They also scored on a Denver possession, of course, and the key play of the game to turn it around early on, that Rod Woodson 98-yard run back. And I think, you know, obviously that took all the air out of Rod Woodson, but I think it also took all the air out of the Denver Broncos. Second and ten. Gannon. That's incomplete. Flag comes in. And for Jerry Rice. Impeding here. It's going to be again. You can only hit him that first five yards. Holding. Defense number 37. Five yard penalty. Automatic. First down. 37 is Tyrone Poole. John, our boss Howard Katz here tonight. And we talked at the top of the show about Rune Arledge is the president of ABC Sports. And he and Pete Rozelle get in together. And in those early years, Don Olmeyer was the producer. Dennis Lewin now with the NFL. Produced a lot of Monday night games in the 70s. And then Bob Goodrich, Ken Wolf came along. And Don O came back in 2000 to produce what turned out to be the greatest game in Monday night history. And now our man Fred Goodelli. Little Monday night litany as Tim Brown hobbles after he makes the catch. Comes up a little gimpy. You know, and I was thinking of those those 500, and you know, I'd been a part of him, you know, as a coach, you know, and, and you know, coaching someone when it first started, and then and then watch. I don't know that I missed a Monday night football game. I bet you of those 500, I would think that one way or another, you know. Because you're trying to think of the one that you didn't see or didn't. I don't, I don't remember one I didn't see. Well, as a coach, let's say you, you, you would be preparing for next week's game, but you'd have the game on. You know, you, know, you know what we'd do? We'd always say, okay, we'll watch a little the beginning of the game, and then, and then we'd go and we'd do our work, and they would say, call us for halftime highlights. And we'd come in at halftime, and we'd always watch halftime highlights because that was a way we could tell what was going on around the league. Pre-cable world, too. You know, all, you know a guy who's seen uh, all of the games? Drew DeRosa. 
Drew, I don't know that Drew's missed a game. Maybe he was uh, sick or on vacation once or twice. Were you, Drew? No, Drew's never He's missed a listening. game. Drew no. was a part of the first Monday night game. He was the only member of our crew. We've got a guy, a lot of guys have been around a long time, but Drew has been here since that Jets Cleveland game in September of 1970. That's the definition of a, a, a veteran, this definition of a veteran that does a great job, and that's what we were talking about earlier with the Raiders. You know, the, you know, the, the veterans that the great players have to come up big. And the and the Raiders did exactly that tonight. I mean, here's Rod Woodson, 15 year vet, going to be in the Hall of Fame, one of the great ones. Rich Gannon had a big night. And then who's he going to throw it to? But the greatest wide receiver that's ever played this game, Jerry Rice. The Raiders needed these guys tonight, and they got them tonight. Woodson 37, Gannon 36, Rice 40. John, what do you expect? It's Veterans Day. <laughs> It all makes sense now. <laughs> it's November 11th, of course. Doug Jolly picks up the first down. Star Trek, there they are. There's what they've done tonight. Jerry Rice is on pace to catch 100 balls this season and to get up to around 1,400 yards receiving. But, you know, I think that record that he, he broke tonight, I mean, you know, that's an all-time record. Now, you know, combined yardage or, or whatever, I mean, Jerry Rice in that area has more yards than anyone who has ever played this game, and he broke it tonight. From the 38. And Garner picks up about three. You know, we sat there with Jerry Rice yesterday. And as I said before, I mean, he looks like he's about 29. He feels great. He appreciates playing the game and what he's done more than ever. So, you know, you, you wonder, is he even thinking about retiring? Now? No, I don't think so. I mean, he's not, you know, he's, I mean, I mean, he's playing too well. And he's healthy, and I think Jerry Rice plays as long as he's healthy. And as long as, as he told us last night, as long as he can be productive, he wants to play. 7,100-yard receiving game for Rice, and Wheatley drops it. Aaron Wheatley. Third down and seven. So tonight in this 500th Monday night encounter, Gannon, 21 consecutive completions. That's a new record inside one game. Jerry Rice extending his record for touchdowns to 201. Sets the combined yardage record, eclipsing the mark held by Walter Payton. Woodson with the record 12 interceptions returned for touchdowns. And Al Davis, who loves to collect veterans, players who a lot of people think have been past their prime, is reaping every benefit tonight. Third down and seven. Gannon gets sacked. And the crowd lets out a Bronx cheer. I was talking to Al last night, you know, and the, and the one thing he said is so true. He said, you're never as good as you think you are when you're winning. In other words, when they were 4-0, he said, we really weren't that good. He said, but we're not as bad as you think when we lost the four. That it's somewhere in between. And I think they showed tonight that they look more like the team that was 4-0 than 0-4. Never more true than this year in the NFL. 34-7 Oakland. 5-11 left. And this is this is a, a strange 34-10. A very strange sight. I mean, most of the crowd has gone home. <laughs> the record for everything. Well, the gift, 411 gift was the the Cal Ripken of broadcasting. Right. I missed a few games early on in, the, in my tenure here because of when we had baseball at ABC in the 80s. And Howard missed a few games from time to time for various and sundry reasons. Oakland's first punt tonight. And an acknowledgement of a man, Dan Deardorff, who never missed a game. And it was Dan's voice at the top of the show tonight where he said, Lord, you can take me now. I've seen it all. It was a great way to sum up that 94 game between Denver and KC. We can look at Rich Gannon here and what he's done in the pocket and then breaking the pocket. In the pocket, he was 30 for 34 and the two touchdowns. Breaking the pocket, he was four for four. So, again, his pass protection tonight and that offensive line of the Raiders 
did such a great job that he didn't have to break the pocket a lot. Bill Romanowski, this has been a, a fruitful return for him. Uh, he'll get bragging rights. Mm -hmm. They'll meet an open toward the end of the year. Greasy goes down in the arms of Travian Smith. So for Brian Greasy, it had been as good a year as 2000. Brian had a great year two years ago. Then last year, an off year. It's that kind of a night here with the steam coming off the ball hits. Greasy puts it on the ground and recovers it himself. And then this year, despite tonight's performance, you know, for Brian, it's been the kind of year where there was some question as to whether he'd be the starter. Would Steve Berline come in on opening day? Adam Schefter did a great piece in the Denver Post about this guy yesterday. And as you all know, you know Bob Greasy is his dad. And Bob lost his wife. Brian lost his mother when Brian was 12. And he's very quietly started a foundation for the children who lose parents at a very early age. Very quietly, but very effectively. And he, he it really works like crazy at it, too. And, and he does things quietly. And he, he didn't want you know, people to know about it. He just wanted to do it. And he, he does everything quietly and efficiently. Very matter of factly, he goes about it. But it's a, it's a foundation named after his mother. Judith Greasy he does great work with it. Fourth down and seven. One thing that's going to probably come to an end tonight for Brian is the fact that he has thrown a touchdown pass in 23 consecutive games. That's not even halfway, of course, to the record. Johnny Unitas, 47. You know, and then he started, you know, and he had such a good start down there, and he was going in there on the four yard line, fast to go in when Rod Woodson picked that one off. And Carswell makes the catch and takes it up to the 32 yard line, so they're able to convert on fourth down. And this this is not what the Denver Broncos, I mean, they were, they felt so good about themselves coming into this game, and I think so confident, and well, you felt the Raiders were the other way, and they played just the opposite. There's a flag down in the secondary, as you see, as Ed McCaffrey makes the catch. You know, that Rod Woodson is a man, isn't he? I mean, I mean, here's a guy 15 years and and had a bad knee and and and, and couldn't practice. And you know, last night I was asking Bill Callahan if, if he thought he'd be able to play, and he says, yeah. Defense is declined. The play results in a first down. He said, yeah, he'll be able to play because he's Rod Woodson. And that, that, that just kind of sums it up. I mean, he gets an interception and runs it back because he's Rod Woodson. He's injured and he plays because he's Rod Woodson. Here's Rod Smith taking it to the 36-yard line. This will be Mike Shanahan's first loss as the Bronco coach at home to the nemesis Raiders. Team he coached back in 88 and... The four games in 89 as that pass is batted and complete. You know, and you go back to that uh, Shannon Sharp injury and you wonder how much of that took away their game plan. I mean, not just Shannon Sharp out there, but, you know, taking him out and he's such a big part of their plan, you know, his alignment and so on. You wonder how that affected their game plan because, you know, Shannon Sharp's injury and then Rod Woodson's interception, I think those were the two things that took the air out of this complete Bronco team and crowd and city probably. And a great job by the Oakland offensive line. They couldn't stop Gannon tonight thinking and bunking and then when he had to go deep he did second down and ten as Greasy goes. Incomplete for Oakland. They couldn't get any better than this weekend. San Diego blows the lead in St. Louis. They lose. Kansas City goes into San Francisco. They lose. And then Oakland beats Denver. So when it's all said and done after tonight, Denver will be six and three. And there it is. Well, in a moment we'll make it six and three. San Diego is already six and three. Oakland will go to five and four. And Kansas City four and five. And then just be be one game out because Oakland will be the only team in the division to won a game this week. Caught 30 yard line, Ashley Lalee. You know, every every time you pick a team that okay, this is a team. This looks like the best team. They're going to be the. It doesn't happen that no. way. 
And I, I think that's that's the great thing about this league. You never know what's going to happen. And they'll turn it over on downs. Turn out the lights. The party's over. <laughs> they say that all good things must end. Call it a night. The party's over. Leave it. And tomorrow and next year starts the same old thing again. <laughs> Did you see <laughs> Howard when, when Don Meredith started to sing? Howard, Howard turned his back on him. <laughs> he did. But before there was Hank Williams, there was Don Meredith. Yeah. And what would Monday night have been in the in the seventies when Dandy was there? About without that song. Well, you know what he did is he made it fun. You know, I mean, did. I mean, you would watch and and it's and it's still football and it's still a game. And if it's a game, it should be fun. And and I think I think that group and those guys and Don Meredith just made it fun for everyone. Hang loose. It, it really had changed the face very much of of broadcasting again in, in a pre-cable era, where you know television was not in its infancy but really coming into its own. And then the production values given to the show and prime time under the lights. And Rune's idea was to, to put Howard in the booth. And that shocked everybody. And then Dandy came in. And an acknowledgement, too, to Keith Jackson, our good buddy, who was the original play-by-play -play announcer before going over to college. But KJ, and I think of, you know, that, that great phrase about these two teams don't like each other very much. Yeah. That was coined by Keith, and now everybody uses it. And it really applies to these two teams. Yes, it does. They hate each other. And, and here's a guy that's been on both sides of that, hating each other. He's hated them, and then he's become them and hated them. Romo. But, you know, I know that, you know, I've always felt that there were, you know, three things that really elevated football. That one was that great giant Colt game. And that, that brought an awareness to the game. The next one I thought was the merger. AFL NFL merger and then the third one was Monday Night Football and I think each one of those elevated the game one step very much in agreement with all of that absolutely two minute warning I wanted to do that once in my life I think you'll be on an airplane before you do that yeah. before the game Commissioner Paul Tagliabue here tonight Broncos owner Pat Boland presenting game balls to representatives of all four branches of our armed services in honor of Veterans Day and it's been Veterans Night here at Invesco Field and congratulations to all our, our servicemen and to all our veterans I mean they they make it a better place for all of us and a million thanks so that skiing shot reminds me of Malibu Kelly Hayes, who of course lives in Aspen and has for years, tells me that the skiing is good. But of course, Kelly tells me the skiing is good there in July. Yeah, but they have to make the snow, I think. I think what they do up there is I think they seed the clouds. See, to get snow up there when it's not snow in place. Here's <laughs> Wheatley. Our man George Hill has been here for a thousand years with us. And Steve Hurt, who's been with us for so long as you look at the horse trailer. And Jerry Rice told us last night. He said, I've got to get on the horse trailer. Jerry, we've granted your wish, at least partially. Yep, I think that, you know, I mean, you take someone that, that is as great as Jerry Rice, he scores a couple touchdowns tonight, he breaks an all-time record, and just for being Jerry Rice, you have to put him on the horse trailer. You have to. And then Rich Gannon, I mean, the job that he's done tonight and the way he's played. I mean, this is as close to a perfect game by a quarterback as as I can remember since the Joe Montana game, that this was Rich Gannon's quarterbacking tonight was a lot like vintage Joe Montana quarterbacking. You know, Rich Gannon was telling us last night that, that his mom told him, always sit in the front because that's where the smart guys sit. He said, don't sit in the back, that's where the dumb ones sit. <laughs> and he said, ever since then, he's always sat in the front of every meeting that he's ever gone to. And you, you talk about a guy who is focused. I mean, you just see it when you, you talk to Rich, as we do, you know, before every time uh, we had the Raiders in, in years past when he was in Minnesota, Kansas City. Just intense. You know, one thing Rich Gannon doesn't do a lot on a football field is smile. No. The smile after the game, though, he should. Leckler's punt. 
And Neal lets it go, and it's going to go out of bounds at the 22 yard line. So the horse trailer will travel to where are we going next week? St. Louis. Right. And that'll be the, the, the site on, what is it, I 70? Just, uh, what goes into St. Louis from here? Well, we go we go from here to 80. We we'll go from Denver to, and then we go down one of them to St. Louis. I'm okay. not sure. We go from here to Chicago. <laughs> there's, the, there's the Bronco. It's a wild <laughs> horse. Let's see, blinkers off. Greasy throws. Farzell makes the catch. I was talking about our man Steve Hurt, John, who provides us with and and make sure we have all of the information right. He's Steve's been here so long that Frank used to call him Mr. Univac. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember Mr. Univac. First and ten. And that's caught by Anderson who's taken out of bounds. He's coming to Denver. The players referring to it as a make or break game. A must win. Using all of those those terms to describe it and they come away with a a rousing victory yeah, and sometimes you know they did exactly what, what what they had to do when you have all these all these veteran players all these guys that are you know high salary players you know and you know we talked about this earlier they have to make plays they have to dig you out of holes too and and they got in a hole but these guys did dig them out of the hole tonight or started to dig them out Gracie converts to Lalee on the 46-yard line. And without a huddle, Vinny Testaverde, the completion percentage mark, the minimum is 20 passes. And tonight, Gannon, 34 of 38, which is 89.5%. You know, I don't understand what's going down in the field now. I mean, I mean, you're down 24 points. There's no way. Why not just... As Andy Don would say, uh, call in the dogs and put out the fire. The hunt's over. Well, the, the, the crowd has turned the lights out because there can't be more than about 3,000 people left. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know what you get out of this. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I mean, I have all the respect in the world for Mike Shanahan and the job that he does, but I don't know what you call this. Do you call it practice? Do you call it post-game? Uh, I mean, I know it's not punishment, but... But why? I mean, why put anyone at risk for injury when when the the verdict is in? Well, we saw that. Uh, actually, we saw that in opening night with Pittsburgh. Yeah, we see it all the time. I mean, they do it all the time. I don't understand that part of it. Mean, speaking of injury, I mean, that's the kind of play that yeah. could result in an knee injury yeah. right there. You know, and someone's going to say, well, if you do that, you're giving up. You're already you're you lost. I mean, there's nothing here except uh, you know the drill of getting it down to zero zero zero. And giving Junior Ioni a sack. Jerry Rice, 40 going on 26. John Richie's had that kind of a night. He's always full of blood. But it's really the Broncos who are full of blood tonight. Because the Raiders come in and rout them 34 to 10.